Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. Today's video comprises a couple of different topics but all comes down to a few questions that I get consistently over all of my videos and also on Instagram as well which is what's the right starter bird for me? What's good for a beginner? What's good for someone who's never owned a parrot before? Should I get a cockatiel because they're really cheap? All of these questions all can be kind of condensed into one video and that's the topic that I want to kind of touch on today is kind of starter birds and beginner birds and what you should do if you don't have any experience. Now to be completely honest with you, I don't recommend a single species as a starter bird for a beginner or anything like that. Now stick with me because I want to explain myself. If you want a certain type of bird, you need to do your research. It is possible for something like a macaw to be your first bird, but you need to be prepared. And for some people who think that cockatiels are easy, they're not. My boyfriend David actually just did a video on this about you know, reasons why you might not want to have a cockatiel because there are so many different things that are all parrot species from the smallest ones to the largest ones that makes it really, really difficult. And kind of leading on from this, um, Gemma from Feathers First, I'll leave her Instagram below, she rescues lots of birds, did a really interesting Instagram post which kind of inspired me to do this video now which kind of touches on uh, birds like cockatiels and budgies seeming kind of expendable. You know, they're really, really cheap to buy. I had a look at some prices and budgies start from about 10 pounds for a budgie and cockatiels around the 50 pounds mark, sometimes more, sometimes less, it depends where they come from. But that's super, super cheap for a very difficult pet. Now there could be some people out there who are thinking, oh, I've had budgies in the past, serve my family, they're super easy, you just put them in a cage with a couple of toys, a mirror and a bell, and um, they live for a couple of years, great stuff. But honestly, budgies deserve just as much care and attention and time and toys and everything like that as a bigger bird. In fact, I don't think people realise that budgies should have an average lifespan of between 8 and 15 years and a cockatiel 15 to 25 years and for a starter or a beginner bird, that's a really long time. These aren't just, you know, throwaway birds that you can have to prepare you for something else. They are standalone amazing species and personally, I find birds like cockatiels and conyers a bit more interesting than larger birds. Not to say that I don't like larger birds, I just... I really like them and I think they're full of personality and so underrated as a pet. However, they do require lots and lots of care. So I feel like the real question is, can you accommodate any kind of size pet into your lifestyle? This is something really important to consider. For example, are you quite young and you're at school or college? Are you thinking of going off to university or traveling the world or, I don't know, moving somewhere different or lots of different life plans and career goals? Is a bird that needs lots and lots of attention, 12 hours of sleep, loads of mental stimulation, training, and a bird that either for a small one lives for 25 years or a bird like a macaw 80 years, is that going to fit into your lifestyle? Is it going to be fair on that bird for you to bring it into your life and not necessarily get all the care and attention it might need? Or, for example, are you a little bit older and wanting a baby macaw? As I said, it's going to live for a very long time. You're going to have to consider lots of different things with that kind of aspect. Something else to consider if you really want a bird, whether it's one of the smaller species or a larger one, is can you handle the noise? Even from a small one, they are extremely noisy. I actually have tinnitus in my ears because I've worked with birds for over 10 years and they're loud and they're loud all the time and it takes a very patient person to kind of deal with that because it's not necessarily something you can train them out of. You can train them to calm down a little bit but screaming is their kind of way of communicating and singing of course as well so if you can't handle that then maybe a parrot isn't quite the right pet for you. Parrots are the most rehomed pet in the entire world and that is because they are super, super difficult to keep. It's important to also recognise that parrots are not toys, they're not decorations, they're not something to occupy a child. They are amazing, amazing creatures but they do require so much care. And if you think that parrots are a cheap pet, you are in for a shock. The initial outlay for a smaller bird might not be too expensive to you, but the amount of toys you need to buy, a fresh diet you need to prepare all the time, 
<sighs> they're cages. Their vet bills are super expensive. So there are so many different things that make these birds expensive and difficult and Pickles is just gonna poop in my hand because that's just one of the things they do as well. Small birds poop every 10 to 15 minutes. Can you handle the poop in the house? It's also worth considering if you can handle mess and destruction because these starter birds have powerful beaks and they like to chew, they like to throw their food everywhere. When Pickles bathes, she likes to drench the wall. Uh, when they eat, they like to throw their food all over the floor and then go and pick it up afterwards. So they are super messy. And if you're someone who likes a quite clean and tidy home, parrots again might not be the pet of choice for you. Another point I wanted to make, no matter whether you have a small bird or a bigger bird, your entire lifestyle is going to change. As I said, they need 12 hours of sleep minimum, so you can't be you know, making loads of noise all the time late at night if that's something you like to do or have parties because it is going to disrupt your birds. You also can't use candles, wax melts, air fresheners, loads of different things are toxic in your home. You can't use non-stick pans. I've got two videos all about common dangers with pet parrots. I'm gonna leave them in the description. Please go and check them out if you're considering uh, getting a parrot into your life because there are so many things you can't have anymore. And I used to absolutely love candles. Yankee candles are my favorites, um, but I can't have them anymore and that's okay. I have a few for kind of display purposes, but I never like them because the fumes are toxic to birds. That's just one of the very minor, minor ways that parrots really do change your life. And there are so many things in your home that you either can't have anymore or you need to change. Another thing as well is if you want one of these small birds like a cockatiel and you've seen all the cute videos, you may have even seen some of our cute videos on our Instagram, not every bird is going to be like that. Not every bird is going to be singing or dancing or doing tricks as competently or, you know, no. you know, you can't just see a bird on the internet and go, oh cool, I want one of those. You have to do your research because you might not get the bird personality that you're looking for because they are all so individual. Another point I wanted to make, which I'm going to make a whole separate video on, but I just want to touch upon it here, is everyone says, oh, go and get a rescue bird. Rescue birds are brilliant. You know, they're looking for a home. Don't get one from a breeder. And in some cases, that's not actually the best route to go down. Rescue birds are difficult, let me tell you. Um, Pickles was a rescue. She has settled in very well. I've had her for quite a while now, but she definitely has some things that are challenging. Uh, our rescue parrot Scampy, who we got recently, the longer we have him, the more behavioural issues we are seeing and it's taking a lot of work to work through them. And that's okay for us because we are experienced parrot owners. But for a first time parrot owner, having a bird like Scampy would be really hard work and wouldn't necessarily be the right fit. So just bear that in mind as well that Sometimes rescue isn't always the correct option and that might be a bit controversial, I'm not trying to tread on anyone's toes but I wanted to make that point because actually then the bird is going to be passed from home to home and then it's not going to be good for them either. So one thing I did want to mention are birds that I don't recommend in general and this again is going to be a little bit controversial, I'm not trying to be controversial and I'm not trying to bash anybody who has these birds at all, that's not my aim, I just want to put a thought out there for anyone who hasn't got a bird yet or is considering getting a bird, just to bear these things in mind. So, birds I don't recommend are cockatoos because they are so intense. They're so sensitive, the least little thing, and they could be plucking out their own feathers. They are loud, they're destructive. <laughs> Pickles pee, that's right. Um, they're just such hard work. I personally would never want one unless David and I achieve our dream of having a parrot rescue. I just, I couldn't cope with one. And we have a lot of time. So you would need to basically not work. You would need to be with your cockatoo for the 12 hours a day that it's awake and be entertaining it. It can't just kind of sit to one side. They need so much attention and they are hard work. So I highly recommend not getting one. I'm also a little bit on the fence about Amazons. They can be sometimes, not always, but sometimes aggressive and particularly hormonal. Um, again, not bashing anyone who has one. Uh, I have worked with them in the past and they are amazing, amazing birds. But again, I don't know if I'd really want one. Um, they can be hard work. And the other two birds, again, <laughs> it's gonna be controversial, why am I saying this? So the other two birds that I don't recommend to be pets are African greys and blue-throated macaws. Now hear me out, if you have one, again, I'm not trying to bash you. However, African greys, are endangered 
blue-throated macaws are critically endangered. So unless these birds are being kept for education purposes or to support captive stock for the potential for reintroduction when there is actually some wild for them to go back to, I just, there's something about it that doesn't quite sit right with me having an endangered species as a pet. And also these species have to have CITES paperwork if you're ever moving them around, even moving them out of the country, registering them to a new owner. There's a lot of work that goes involved and yeah, there's just something for me that doesn't quite sit right. I think they're incredible species and I know that lots of people have them and that's okay. And if you were to get one from a rescue, that's, you know, that's fine. They're looking for homes, but to purposely go out and have one as a pet, I don't know, it doesn't, there's just something about it for me. So I would recommend looking into other species first and then maybe considering them later down the line. So bringing back to my original point, if you want a macaw as your first pet, or you want a conya as your first pet, or a pinus, or a kaik, or whatever it is that you would like as your first bird, that is okay, as long as you do your research. So watching videos like mine, or David's, or any other brilliant creators that there are on YouTube, that's perfect, that's a great starter point. But that doesn't prepare you for being around these birds in person. A lot of people see loads of videos of macaws and they think, wow, these are incredible birds flying in the sky, they're beautiful. They are so loud. I can't even begin to describe how loud macaws are. And it's just not a, you know, a croak here and there. When they really go off on one, it's super loud. And you have to consider your neighbours, your own ears, and all those things combined as to whether you can cope with that noise because it, it's a lot it's a lot to handle really. So maybe consider when the world is back to normal, if you can pet sit for a friend or a relative or someone you know, if they have a parrot, see what it's like to actually take care of them. Get in touch with the rescue centers and sanctuaries, that kind of thing. Breeders, pet shops, anywhere that keeps birds, even potentially zoos and wildlife parks may appreciate your help for a little while. And you can get to grips of what it's like to prepare a diet on a daily basis, what it's like to change and create enrichment, what it's like to have, be around the noise and the mess and actually cleaning up the mess several times a day. It's, it's a lot of work. I'm not saying don't do it because parrots for the right owners really do make great pets, but for the wrong owners or the wrong matchup of species, it can be difficult if you haven't done enough research. So to summarize, there's not a species that I would recommend as a starter bird. There are certainly some that I don't necessarily recommend for quite a lot of owners, but if you want a certain type of species and they're one that you're really drawn to, just do your research, experience them in person, and then you can make a decision as to whether they would be right for you. Consider your lifestyle and where you're at in your life, uh, and then bring all these things together and make a, an informed choice because as I said, for the right owner, parrots can be incredible companions, but they do completely change your life, your lifestyle, what you can and can't do. So just bear all of these things in mind and have fun. And of course, ask David and I any questions you like. We're always on hand to answer your questions. We love to chat to you. So if you have any questions on today's video or anything else bird related, please do leave it down below as we would love to chat to you. But from me and Pickles, who's scrabbling around, Chip and Fish, who are making loads of noise, and Scampy, who's being suspiciously quiet. You need to check on him. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Take care and see you later.